it was not a very popular field. I yeah. had difficulties explaining to my parents what I do. But yes, moving from agency to client was a very big step. <laughs> I think you, you, you <laughs> have faces. What, what helped you to get a job in Singapore? Because obviously you're working in India and did yeah. you go to Singapore? A two to three year experience in PPC or programmatic advertising in India and he's getting a job offer in Singapore. What are the average so, salary? If you are hiring and you have two candidates, one is very skilled and there's one more person who is not as skilled but they have MBA in digital marketing. Who would you prefer? And they want to learn programmatic advertising. What's the first tool you would ask them to learn? For example, in agencies, you can't talk to a client and tell him, you know what, we did this test and it didn't work. It didn't work does not exist. Hello and welcome to another video of Sanitary Run Ads. This is going to be a very special video. Today here in Berlin, I am with my ex-colleague already. He was a colleague until last week. Now mm. he's an ex-colleague already. Carlton has been in programmatic industry for Can almost 14 years. Yep. So I thought why not talk to Carlton about a lot of things which the questions I generally receive. Got a lot of questions from India, Pakistan, even Turkey uh, about people asking me how do we uh, make a move to Europe and Singapore and other countries. When you started in this digital marketing uh, field, I did like nine years ago. Uh, in 2014 you did like four years before. Even at my time it was not a very popular field. I had yeah. difficulties explaining to my parents what I do. So when you started in this field, very how, similar. how was it? It was actually very similar. Like, to be honest, I didn't know such an industry existed. Yeah. It, was, it was literally my first job coming out of college. I'm a computer engineer. I knew coding was not my thing. And it came out of circumstance. Something came up, I like, okay, for now, let me do this and then see what happens. So it's not like now, like people are like, I want to be in digital marketing industry. No, you never knew what never. it meant. Like this job came I up. didn't know such an industry. As, you, as I just said, right? Like you never ever thought this was actually an industry. Okay. Well, I mean, what did happen? Like you got a job opportunity? So when I passed out, it was still a recession going on. Which year was it? 2000? 2008. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's like the epicenter, epicenter of, of, recession. of the recession. So of course, no one was hiring, all of that. I was just sitting at home for six months. Oh. Started off in a company called Zedo. It doesn't exist now, unfortunately, because it got acquired a few years ago by Discovery. Oh, okay. But it was a company that was pre-programmatic time. <laughs> yeah. It was a time when ad servers was a main, yeah. main and only ecosystem in yeah. marketing or advertising. There yeah. was no bidding, there was no RTV, there was no Facebook ads, nothing like that. It was purely ad servers w working as an ad tech company. I think the bidding and ad exchanges and all, it all came after 2010-ish. Yeah. yeah, around 10, <laughs> 11, somewhere around there. That's interesting because uh, even me, I ended up in this field not knowing what it is. I got I a think job. I 90% yeah. of people in marketing. Yeah. At least until uh, very recently, right? Yeah. Nobody wanted to be a digital exactly. marketer. You were like, okay, now, exactly. okay, this thing is growing. This thing is picking up pace. Okay, exactly. so no need to change. And, and the best part that time was explaining your job was, yeah, you see ads on ads, websites. Yeah yeah, 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 I work I, on I that component that. over that. there. The scenario has changed a lot. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of people consciously want to be digital marketers. True. And now it's so vast field. Yeah. Like back then, I remember I once went for an interview and I used to work on DFP uh, publishing side. Mm. And they were like, okay, we want someone to run our Google AdWords. We know you work on different things, but you are a digital marketer. Can you learn Google Ads and uh, mm. we can give you a job? True. I swear this is what <laughs> used to happen. But now it's a very different yeah. game. But I think there are a lot of reasons for that because um, if you look at the job market now, the only, uh, if you're a digital marketer, you don't need to worry about job loss or there are no jobs in the market. If you're skilled, you can get jobs exactly. anywhere, right? Before we proceed further, I want to say a big thank you to Wizme for sponsoring this video and making it possible for us to create these kind of videos. My favorite feature in Wizme is the recently launched feature which is Wizme Forms, which can actually transform your engagement rates of your landing pages. In last few years, all the marketing tools we have been using, there has been some kind of innovation. Landing pages and forms is the only thing where there was no innovation and Wizme Forms has actually done that. The whole process is so simple and straightforward. Once you register, 
register you go here you click on create and in order to create a form you click on form after that you choose what kind of form you want to create so for example i will choose newsletter sign up it'll give me a lot of templates now let's say i click on this one i click on edit to see how this looks now i can customize all of this now once i finalize this the next step is connect where i can connect it to any email marketing platform a lot of options are available there including shopify mailchimp and even google sheets now let's say if i connect google sheets the next stage is published and it gives you an option now let's say if you don't have a website you can directly copy this link and use it as a landing page or if you have a website there is another option where you can click on embed copy code embed it on your website and you are all done you can access all the data here as well for this particular form so i'll put a link in the description below where you can sign up for free as well as i'll put the link to the case studies where you can see how companies have used wisme forms to increase their engagement by even 100 percent now back to our video how long have you been working which countries and uh, what sure like, like as i briefly? said like i started off at zero which was primary an ad server i worked in their tech support of course fresher mm -hmm. you don't have choice so start tech support learned the fundamentals of advertising of ad serving grew up from that then moved into their media division, which there was more on the rich media, outstream ad units and all that. As a sales engineer, led the team over there for a few years and then... So you kind of used to talk to the clients of the company and tell yes. them how you How to implement them. tags. Okay. Like, it's like old school things. Mm -hmm. How to implement tags, how tags work, testing the tag, using Charles or Fiddler of those. Oh yeah, yeah. Charles, exactly. Charles, like you used to connect exactly. the pings and yeah. what comes the, back. Pings, what comes yeah. back then, mm -hmm. edit the code real live and mm -hmm. then see the real implications of the tags and all yeah. of that. So, and then I got an opportunity to move to Singapore with Dentsu, mm -hmm. where I was part of the Amnet. We created curated marketplaces for clients as a whole. Okay. So like if we had a gaming client, we used to have a curated marketplace list of sites that are more tailored to that to ah, move okay. brand marketing spends from direct IOs to programmatic. So uh, I think YouTube lineups and all came after that, yeah, exactly. but that's the concept. You exactly. Used to so I worked for three years in Dentsu with the publisher team over there. But before we move to the next role um, um, you did in Singapore and then in other countries, what what helped you to get a job in Singapore? Because obviously you're working in India and did yeah. you go to Singapore and find a job? Did you find it? No, no, it was definitely true connections. Like I knew people over there. I reached out to them. They, check, they of course, had friends over there working already. So they knew people over there. And that's how it comes out. Yeah. So... It's funny because uh, I just published a video seven days ago and in that I put a lot of emphasis that how you need to create connections hmm. to grow in your of career course. because sometimes knowing someone is as important as how skilled you are. Exactly. So that's actually, I, that's why I was asking you. I mean, LinkedIn works for a lot of people. If somebody says, okay, I don't have connections, what do I do? LinkedIn works, but then connections are very, very important. No, and, and even like you said, like people say that, oh, I don't have any connections. It doesn't mean that you should not try. There are a lot of people, like I have a close friend of mine who used to be hardcore sales. Like he worked in India, he worked in Canada and all. And he didn't know heads, not tails of programmatic. Today, he's a, a associate director for publicists in Canada for programmatic. Yeah. Why? Because he didn't say, oh, I don't have connect. He didn't have connect. He just reached out. He just went asking people, hey, can we just have a catch up? Not a job or anything. Let's have a coffee or let's just, I just want someone to mentor me or something yeah. like that. There are always people, it might not be the first person, second person, but there'll always be people yeah. like, hey, yeah, sure. Why don't we just catch up? And that's how you end up having connections. Yeah. Even you go to a webinar and talk to people. Exactly. There. And uh, this is what I think maybe you will uh, disagree. When it comes specifically to programmatic advertising, this field is still not saturated. There are a lot of, I mean, vacancies and a lot of people don't understand programmatic in oh, a yeah. way they should, right? Correct. So, I mean, in last few years, I have seen that, okay, uh, there's an opening for uh, programmatic advertising. Okay, I used to work with this guy two, uh, two years before in that company. Let me call him up. It still works that yeah. way, right? Yeah. I think, and... When it comes to India specifically, there are a lot of people who are experienced in programmatic advertising because there are so many agencies, so many clients Correct. and a lot of tech teams in Google and other companies. But it's just they need to work on connections. Yeah, and, definitely. And we would uh, hire people from anywhere on the globe if yeah. we find the right. Exactly. Thing, right? I see. I mean, even here for the team in Germany or uh, I was in a few interviews 
for Dubai roles uh, mm-hmm. last last week, and half of the people we were interviewing were not based in UAE. Mm. So it's quite normal, I think. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the way to go about it. Okay, so let's move ahead uh, with the story. Um, you worked in India, then you went to Singapore. You worked for Densu for a while, and after Densu, what 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 did you do? Yeah, so after Densu, I moved to a. Uh, what you would what people call it the Uber Southeast Asia Grab, okay. where I was leading the programmatic strategy for the region. Where I got laid off because of COVID, when COVID hit, mm-hmm. uh, and then I moved to Delivery Hero for Singapore, where for I was Food Panda for Food Panda, the Food which Panda was grab. quite similar to Grab. Like it's yeah, the same it was. Business. It's a part of the vertical overlap mm-hmm. is there because Grab sees to multiple verticals. Yeah. Now it's even more. But yeah, the food delivery division did have overlap. Where I moved to Food Panda, where I was leading the mobile marketing. Uh, efforts for for, uh, for the brand. This is interesting uh, for me to ask you uh, because you initially worked on the tech side, right? Mm. Uh, kind of um, mm. the role, and then you moved to uh, Densu, and you were kind of looking at the partnerships. Obviously, uh, having the knowledge of programmatic landscape was important, and you were driving those kind of conversations and uh, projects. Mm-hmm. And this, after Densu, you moved to Grab and then Food Panda, which is like a uh, client side. Now you were the one kind of looking at the programmatic advertising of these companies. How was the transition from tech oh. side, agency, and then client so, side? So this my, is always uh, no. my favorite question. <laughs> no, so to be honest, from tech side to agency, I didn't find it that difficult. But yes, moving from agency to client was a very big step. <laughs> I think you 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 have faced a similar yeah, yeah, similar yeah, yeah, scenario. Yeah. Like yeah. client, like people in the agency, and it's it was me being completely honest, but also other friends and all of everyone thinks that oh, client is easy because agencies do everything. It is fine if the agency is doing everything. Yeah. If the client is doing a lot of in-house stuff, oh, it's it's a different beast yeah. altogether. And that is something where you have to adapt and get used to. Yeah, I mean, it depends. If the client side is like, uh, okay, you just have to manage an agency, mm-hmm. then it's a very different thing. But yeah. for me, it will be boring. Yeah. At the same time, on the client side, you have some leverages you don't have in agencies. For example, in agencies, you can't talk to a client and tell him, you know what, we did this test and it didn't work. It didn't work does not exist. On the client side, you're like, okay. Uh, I I disagree with that, to be honest. It really depends on who the POC with the agency is from the client side. Even when I was a dentist, there were one, two clients who were like, yes, do. Like, I have no problem you trying it out, but tell me what happens. So I had FMCG clients as well who have told me that as well when I was working with them. So it is... It, that's what it's a lot of perception yeah that I think have. Uh, maybe it's just me who didn't see the best of the client for for me personally I mean for when I moved to client side which was delivery hero and uh, I f- felt it was very relaxing maybe and there was a room to experiment things and you will be like okay yeah this, this didn't work you mentioned Charles I mean you remember those days when you used to look at the string of the yeah. ad request what are the parameters what mm. came back yeah. what are the sizes and all nowadays you don't see those kind of mm-hmm. things everything is kind of automated you look at the macro okay we can put the macro in here True. how did it expand why is it showing different sizes and all those things we yeah. worked on tech side and when i moved to agency and client side and i talked to people about okay uh, so for example when i used to work in agency they'll be like okay the publisher is saying the creative is not working something needs to be changed Okay, I used to ask my teammates, what needs to be changed? They're talking about some macro. I used to go and test it. Mm -hmm. I used to open an HTML5 creative, check the code. Okay, there's no exit event. Mm -hmm. They'd be like, how do you know this? So I think initially in your career, it's very important in the digital marketing, performance marketing, programmatic advertising. You work for tech side, companies like this, or at least agencies. Yes. Do you agree? I agree. Completely agree. So yes, tech side would be ideal, but the number of tech companies also are small, yeah. especially at tech. So if anyone asks me today, like, where should I start? Like, as a beginner, always agency. Yeah, grind no matter, agency big, in the beginning. It, it is a grind, especially when you're starting off. It is hard work. It is a lot of long hours. I don't know about the European side of things, as you know. I think but in, in Asia, in general, it is a grinding job. Yeah. Be it India, I'm pretty sure UAE, where you have worked, Oof. as well as Singapore, it's a grinding job. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that is where you learn the most. And in any marketing field, I think, the or anything that you do in marketing, the moment you understand the basics, everything else is a very easy uh, learning curve. 
that's what i keep t- telling everyone your fundamentals should be very yeah. strong don't go after like okay it's a bit irrelevant but i still want to mention it you go to uh, youtube i want to learn digital marketing then you land on videos we say make 200 dollars a day mm-hmm. okay this click bang mm-hmm. that click is uh, mm-hmm. i mean you need to understand the fundamentals of marketing first then exactly. digital marketing fundamentals and then you can grow and i always say this agencies you need to work for agencies in the beginning of yeah, your career yeah true you learn so much from agency because unlike the client side where you only focus on one thing and trying to drive that one thing with exactly. a limited set of things like you can't do too many things with cl- with agency you work with so many clients there for so many other partners exactly. which means you always have something new to come up with exactly you work with different kind of businesses exactly. there's one e-commerce client there's exactly. one client the exposure is so big in the agency exactly i have seen some big clients for certain roles they prefer uh people who have agency experience yeah I mean it's a plus point even now I if I go and I uh, am interviewing for a role uh, if I see someone has agency experience I would prefer him any day yeah over in fact w- one of the my colleagues in one of my ex company I'm not want to mention names but she also like if I ever hire someone I know if I hire someone from agency I know my my work will get done okay so um, you moved to um, Singapore you worked in India then you worked in Singapore for Grab Food Panda and now um you worked in uh, germany hmm. what are the main differences you think uh, working in these three countries like an overview what in terms of work culture where did you enjoy most to be honest <clears throat> it each one had a different phase in my life where i enjoyed each place because of that like in india it was initial start of my career it was all about getting things done learning as much as i can working through shifts working nights understanding everything and growing there then i moved to the next phase of my career which happened to be singapore luckily where it was more about growing myself career wise getting more connections understanding things on a larger a larger scale of things having a little better work life balance as compared to india yeah. i think again similar to dubai it is one of the most safest country in the world yeah. you can walk at like 3 4 am in the morning as long as you don't break any rules no one's going to touch you or do anything to you everyone lives their own life everyone's happy over there and i think it's the center of like that um asian market yeah. when it comes to indonesian market exactly like the, the exposure in marketing the exposure that you get in singapore is huge and uh, tax free money as well i mean the tax is in singapore yeah, so it's insignificant <laughs> for the amount you make it's insignificant so in terms of salaries i i let's say uh, a 2 to 3 year experience in ppc or programmatic advertising in india and he's getting a job offer in singapore what are the average so, salary so so again like i don't know the salaries now because again it's been a lot of changes since i've left singapore i think that time someone with 2 to 3 years experience would get somewhere around 50 to 60000 singapore dollars singapore dollars yeah and someone with experience of 5 to 7 years of experience expert oh, in programming any, advertising anyone anyone above that you can easily touch 90 to 100 it's a lot yeah, of money it's a lot. and then when you deduct taxes like literally nothing yeah i so, mean i think it's under 10% overall when you look at yeah on average you can just consider 10% being the upper limit and then after that you move to germany in terms of work culture what work, are the differences you see here uh, work yes you know, they treat quality of life in a very different way as compared to singapore yeah like if you if you are supposed to work from 9 to 5 you you finish at 5 no one expects you to work beyond if you want you can but no one expects you and the and the thing that i really like the most is that when you're on leave you're on leave no one is yeah. going to call you like hey do you have to just no matter I need, what no matter what whether the company is going to crash or anything <clears throat> nothing like that you're on leave take your time off you require that time off I know. I mean, just an example. We have been working f- together for one and a half years. In the team, I just have your phone number mm-hmm. and my manager's phone number. That's all. Mm-hmm. I don't even have phone numbers of others. Yeah, yeah. I, I one thing over here which I have realized, which is not, which is there in sorry, one thing that is not here that is there in at least in Singapore. I don't know in Dubai or anything. Is that 
you always have your office groups on WhatsApp. Exactly. I mean, when I used to join a company in Dubai, the first day they would add me to 10 different exactly. WhatsApp groups. Okay, this is with this client, this is with this client. And a lot of And also within the team, this is the wider team with okay. your, with your uh, directors and all. Then there's one with only the traders. Know, yeah. Then there's one only <laughs> this. Yeah. So there's always this, and over here, nothing like that. Like yeah. everyone values privacy. Everyone knows if you want to be part yeah. of any group, you create your own group, whatever. But nothing related to anything beyond this point. Exactly. I, and But at the same time, like you are supposed to work from nine to five. That's what you do. Yeah. There's a lot of things you, you can kind of highlight. Okay, I am having work pressure. I'm not able to concent, concentrate. If a doc, doctor tells you, you need to take a break for one, one month. Yeah. The company cannot fire exactly. you or anything. They need to give it you It is very pro-employee. Uh, they, they make sure that employees <laughs> operate to the fullest when they are Com- when they are 100% capable with regards to hiring yes they rather wait three four months and get the right hire than just hire okay because we have an opening because as i said over here it is a very pro employee labor laws and you can't just let go of people like you can in other countries you have to have there's a process to it which is more difficult than it initially seems so when they hire, they make sure that they're hiring the right person for that particular role. If you cross your probation, a company needs to give you a warning letter and then after they need to give you another warning letter after six months, okay, you haven't improved and now we are essentially, hiring yeah. you. Essentially, you have to justify yeah. why they're letting you go because yeah. an employee can sue a company for a wrongful termination over here. Yeah, exactly. And that's one reason as well. When they hire, they you need to properly know your shift. Yeah. They do not compromise at all. I, okay. I mean, what happened last year when you were yeah, hiring, exactly. interviewing for three months yeah. uh, or four months, you didn't find anyone. Then there was a company-wide hiring freeze. Correct. And uh, yeah, so, but I have seen in Dubai and all, if you're hiring, you, you interview four or five candidates and you go with one, okay, you will compromise a bit and because you know you can fire them later. But here, if you are applying for a PPC role, you need to make sure that you are yeah. very, very good yeah. at what you do. Whatever role yeah. you're applying for, make sure you know the ins and outs because whenever someone's going to interview you over here, they're going to make sure that you are an absolute expert in that field. Exactly. And not just, okay, oh, at a high level, you can do this and that. No. Okay, now we will uh, kind of switch uh, the gears a bit and I will uh, go to the questions which actually the subscribers have asked mm-hmm. me. One of the questions a lot of people are interested to know is they think that uh, they ask basically, okay, I, I'm a fresh college graduate. I came to know about digital marketing field. I want to start a career in digital marketing field. Uh, is it saturated? Uh, a lot of people say it's saturated. There are no jobs now or uh, things like that. What, what what do you have to say about it? I don't think digital marketing will ever be saturated for a pure reason that any brand, be it a startup or be it something that an influencer brand, they will still depend on some form of digital marketing to grow it. Like organic will only lead you to X, but if you need to scale to Y, you need marketing skills, be it basic influencer marketing or meta Facebook ad manager marketing or even Google ads. There will be some form. So there's never going to be saturation. There's always going to be an evolution. Like uh, we were discussing that day. Uh, five, six years ago, people said TV advertising is dead. Yeah. Fast forward five years now, the big companies are actually pushing CTV advertising. CTV advertising yeah. It is just going to evolve. It's never going to change. I mean, it's never going to die out. It's always going to change. So more than saturated, you have to always keep yourself updated so that you can adjust to the evolution and always be ready whenever someone brings up something new. Startups and medium-sized businesses are very dependent on digital marketing. I mean, I can't think of a brand who who just depended on organic and uh, they had a huge uh, growth. And I think digital marketing is like a backbone for smaller big medium companies. But at the same time, even big companies, they invest a lot of online advertising, Coke, big, big, Nike. Exactly, name, because they brand. need, because advertising is the only way where they can always maintain awareness within the, the people. Yeah. Otherwise, it is going to slowly die off. Digital marketing is needed by all companies, which means there is always a requirement for people yeah. skilled. And which goes back to this, as we discussed, uh, there is a lot of noise. Everybody calls him a digital marketer. But then uh, let's, let's, let's be honest here. When we look for candidates, when we are hiring, sometimes we are like, 
I mean, the people who are looking for job and they're like, there are no jobs. Mm. More than that, we are frustrated there are no candidates. No for right candidates for a role. I think the reason for that is because a lot of people get caught in the noise. Mm. They don't actually understand what digital marketing is True. or how much efforts they have to put, how to learn the fundamentals and Correct. all that. No, I agree with you. If somebody wants to be a programmatic ads expert, let's talk about a fresher now. Would you suggest him to... Uh, basically look for entry-level jobs within programmatic advertising and wait until he gets a chance or would you suggest them to initially work on let's say a PPC Google Ads Facebook ads for a year or two and then kind of move to programmatic advertising within the agency and once they have the fundamental knowledge of these platforms if you're fresh and all and you're getting say a job with say Google Ads or Facebook ad manager go for it but if you still want to do programmatic Make sure your skills are still sharp enough. Update your skills, grow your skills on programmatic. Because in the end, be it Google Ads, be it programmatic, be it uh, Facebook ad, in the end, the fundamental concepts are still the same. They yeah. all are RTB systems. It's so just different fun, channels. Exactly. It's just different uh, different types of campaigns that they have because of the inventory. And how they fit in overall channel mix or strategy exactly. of the company. It's 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 all interrelated. But yeah, like if you get something, never say no. My simple thing is say yes, do it, see, and then adjust accordingly. But just waiting for, oh, maybe I might get this job, it, it doesn't work out. You might be lucky. I'm not saying it is never going to be a possibility. It's always a possibility, but probability is low. Yeah, and again, I would say if somebody, is, let's say an agency is hiring for programmatic traders mm -hmm. as an entry-level job, they would prefer someone who at least knows any other channel exactly. like a Google Ads or Facebook because, Ads. Again, yeah, yeah, for them, it, the learning curve skills. is easier exactly. and than uh, someone who is a complete newbie. So if um, somebody wants to move, um, let's say somebody is working in India and uh, they're working in Facebook Ads or Google Ads, have two, three years of experience or programmatic ads, and they want to move to, let's say, Singapore or Germany because you know about these two countries, which applies to all European countries. Would you say they should focus on becoming expert in one particular channel or they should have uh, knowledge of all these channels? You can try and be an expert across all channels, but you'll never, when, when, you'll never know the ins and outs of all the channels at any point of time. You'll always be an expert on one channel and have knowledge about how hard the channels work to some extent. It also depends on which or what is your phase in your career. If you're... Mm, what do you say, a mid-level role, mm -hmm. then stay focused on one channel. Know that channel in and out. Know what works, what doesn't work, how you scale it, how you grow it, how you improve, optimize, and so on and so forth. If you're in the most senior level, mid-senior and all, manager or leads and all, then you be an expert in one channel, but you know Maybe. concept and strategic use of the other channels. Yeah, because, because at that point, you, do, you don't need to know, okay, if this bid, what, how it impacts this campaign, or if I change this setting of this campaign, how it impacts the performance and all. You don't need to know the ins and outs. You just need to know, okay, we can use Google Ads to scale this way and that way. Facebook, we use this campaign to scale uh, uh, reattributions and so on and so forth. So conceptually, you need to just know strategically and high level on how each one works for higher level and as you go up less dependencies on the platforms comes in so it really depends on which level you are at mm. and where you want to focus it on we all know that digital marketing is kind of um, a mixed skill if, if yeah. uh, you would say uh, kind of it's a mix of uh, crunching numbers data analytics it's a mix of knowing ad tech tools and at the same time it's a mix of creativity how you kind of design your campaigns structure your campaigns sure. or how you what kind of creative testing you do uh, now that you need to know all these things uh, what do you think what are some uh, important skills you look in a person if you're hiring let's say for example uh, what are some important skills so it comes back to what we've been discussing the first thing I do is check this uh, how strong his fundamentals are. Mm -hmm. Without that, the rest of the interview really doesn't go ahead too much. Because if he doesn't know his fundamentals, if he just knows high level, then I know what I'm getting into. Like he can, the person, he or she, can only say things but not do it. But if he knows the fundamentals, no matter how limited his knowledge may be on a particular topic, 
I know that because his fundamentals are strong, for him to pick up that something will be very easy because his baseline. So I always first check the fundamentals, what it is. Mm -hmm. Like the most common question I ask today during interviews is, why would you, when and why would you use Google Ads versus DV360? In a particular case. Yeah. yeah. What, what are the benefits of, which one would you prefer? In a particular scenario. Yeah. Let's say the objective of a digital marketer is to be a kind of a freelancer in two years. They need to work on clients and take projects. How important do you, for them do you think uh, data crunching and data analytics? Oh, is? it is important. Then. Because, again, to justify a use case, you need to understand how to play around with data. Like, you cannot just say, oh, our campaign ran, we got XYZ acquisitions and all. But how we got it, like, what, what type of users led to those acquisitions? That is where the skill set brings and in, comes into picture as well. Understanding what the platform is doing to drive the performance. That is where data crunching, uh, crunching comes also. So, no, just not just running the campaign, but complementing what you're running to an actual performance is where data and understanding data makes a big difference. Okay, one more question from the subscribers. A lot of people ask me this. Uh, it's, it's a mixed question, so we can split it into two sure. parts. <clears throat> one is, people say, is having a degree in digital marketing career important let's say somebody now wants to drop out of college or they didn't finish college and they want to pursue digital marketing as a career and obviously grow uh, in uh, and take it as a long-term career do you think at any point of career uh, even beginning a degree is important to have like a bachelor's degree or a master's degree you don't require a degree to be digital marketing come on i'm an engineer yeah. I should be doing coding and all, I'm doing digital marketing. Me too, so, I'm an electronics engineer. Exactly, I'm a computer engineer. So it, a degree has got nothing to do with uh, digital marketing. It is basically what drives you. Exactly. If you're driven to do digital marketing, do it. If you are hiring and you have two candidates, one is very skilled in, let's say, programmatic advertising, or you're hiring for, a, let's say, Google Ads role, UAC, uh, and there's one more person who is not as skilled, but they have MBA in digital marketing. Who would you prefer? Experience. I'm right? sorry. Yeah, it's I mean, that, that's what I would yeah. do as well. And I have never seen a particular company or a particular role where they prefer I, role I, in digital I, I do, marketing. I don't think we are in the generation now where degree, what degree you are done correlates to a job. If somebody asks you an advice, they say, I have an option to work for an agency for two years. I want to make a long-term career in digital marketing. Option number one, I work for an agency for two years. I want to go for MBA in digital marketing. Which work for an agency in two years. What about people who don't have bachelor's degree and they want to learn digital marketing, work for agency, freelance uh, as a freelancer, and then make a career in digital marketing? Do you think that's possible at any point? They will be kind of course of again, like it comes down to experience, right? Like, even as you said, you always look at the experience yeah, the person. I mean, so, if a person say, let's say the same thing, one guy who has done a degree in digital marketing, and then we have another guy who's done, say, a freelance job in a Google Ads, or another freelance job in Facebook ad manager, I would still pick him because he has that relevant skills which I actually need was someone who may or may not have based on what the course showed to yeah. work on a particular platform. I think digital marketing overall is a very experienced and skill driven industry. Yeah. You basically literally do marketing for companies, help them make more money. They don't care whether you have a degree. Or exactly. Degree. If you are able to generate more leads, exactly. more sales, that's all they need. And I don't think a degree is relevant. Or it's a blocker if you don't have a degree, if you are very skilled at, uh, at it. And a lot of people uh, asked me, they didn't even start digital marketing uh, as a career, but they asked me, okay, with all these AI tools now, do you think in five years there'll be no digital marketing jobs, AI will do everything? Uh, what do you think about it? I don't think it will. Like, it's still very early to say anything. Like, AI is still new. Yes, there will be some processes that AI will eliminate, like creative scaling or creative alterations which AI can help, but if we're talking about operational jobs, automation still requires someone to have a look, relook, verify, validate whether it makes sense and or not. And even prompt. Uh, yeah, and prompt. Yeah, I think you touched an important point. Uh, that's what I think. I mean, in certain areas, 
it will free our time as digital yeah. marketers like creative scaling and things like that but then marketing is so unique for every company like we work for food delivery mm. apps within the same brand two different we work for two different uh, apps mm. and the marketing because they are in different markets yeah. how and how different? people pursue them exactly. is so different one thing that works for one app doesn't work, doesn't for, work other for the apps, other right? correct if you take an example google has a lot of ai tools in the back end running yeah. and they give you optimization tips but half of the recommendations they have are not even relevant to your business yeah, that's right? that's because true. they cannot choose for every business exactly. individually you as a marketing manager know what works for your company what doesn't how things are changing correct they cannot have like that's what and, i think and, at and, least and, at this point and the most important thing also in digital marketing that people forget is where the company is in its uh, what do you say in its growth is it a mature company it is a growing company it is a startup saturated exactly. market they need retention more exactly. i mean there are so many parameters hundreds and hundreds exactly. of parameters which are very uh, tricky huh. but as you said that's what i believe it ai tools they will free us from certain from the tasks. mundane tasks yeah like creative scaling exactly. and all but they cannot define a strategy they no. cannot define a plan for you i don't think uh, i mean even if they do then you would have to put so much time into explaining to the ai that what do, what where we are what is our focus mm. what do we need Correct. it's easier to just define a strategy on mm. your own then <laughs> true 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 way to yeah that's what i think at least what i see in the foreseeable future that's what i think a lot of people are scared about it i don't know i mean i don't see yeah, it happening I, in the foreseeable future that, 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 it comes for a time when people like oh we're going to a cookieless world advertising is going to shut and i'm yeah. like There we are still something. going into the cookieless world five years later. Yeah, yeah there's <laughs> so, always there's something. always yeah. To be honest, like again, as I said, evolution is the more important part of digital marketing. Digital marketing always evolves and never gets shut. Somebody who is a digital marketer who is uh, been working for one or two years in PPC or Facebook ads or anything, mm. uh, any channel, and they want to learn programmatic advertising, what's the first tool you would ask them to learn? I think the first tool would be understanding understanding the two major platforms that there are for programmatic mm -hmm. straight away DV three sixty or Trade Desk because most if not all I think ninety nine percent all all agencies use these two platforms and They, everything else is built based on based on them their, their concept. If you want to be the first mover, it has to be the trade desk. I'm not going to lie; they always been the first mover. They were the ones who first pushed for CTV, then pushed for out of home. Google is now on that. Google is more of the mature DSP, mm -hmm. while trade desk is more of the first mover DSP. But yeah, learn these two DSPs, and then the rest is just trying to decipher what that does that trade desk and uh, DV three sixty doesn't. Let's switch our gears. Uh, so, because you have worked in India, you have worked in Singapore and uh, Germany. I'll tell you if somebody is looking for a particular priority in their life, which country is best for them? Let's say making money. Singapore. Uh, Work-life balance. Germany. Developing uh, strong technical uh, concepts and knowledge and skills. Any country. Yeah, I guess it's, it's uh, any, any country. country. It depends on the job or what you do. and it all it depends on what you want to push yourself to thank you so much for all those uh, no, insights pleasure, and pleasure. Uh, it was pleasure hosting you on my channel though we are uh. sitting in your home <laughs> but thank no, you no. so much pleasure to have you